Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show. So, if you're like me, then possibly your first introduction to the field of biogerontology is the 2013 review article, The Hallmarks of Aging, by Lopez Oten et al. This most cited review in the field of aging defines common denominators of aging in different organisms and puts them into nine different hallmarks, and it's a pretty common reference point for the field. I've always liked the hallmarks as an introduction to the field, so much so that I described the hallmarks in some of my earliest videos. And speaking of my earliest videos, given that it's almost my two-year birthday on YouTube, woo, I thought I'd revisit the hallmarks of aging, given that there has been some recent criticism on them, suggesting that maybe we should start to look beyond them. So in this video, I'll first explain why models and paradigms are useful to scientific research, and then show you the different models used to explain aging as the hallmarks is not the only model that has been proposed. And then we'll look at the limitations of the hallmarks as discussed in this recent critique paper, and lastly look at their solution. And just to let you know, I've also made this video in tandem with Life Extend Show, whose video you can check out here. So the first thing we need to talk about is why paradigms are really useful for scientific research. And while a paradigm is basically a pattern or model or something, but the more scientific version, as defined by the historian of science, Thomas Kuhn, in his book, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions, he defines scientific paradigms as universally recognized scientific achievements that, for a time, provide model problems and solutions for a community of practitioners. Which is basically the idea that mature fields of science possess effective paradigms, which are foundations of understanding that not only explain diverse phenomena, but can also engender a shared perspective for communities of working scientists. And so examples of scientific paradigms would include the periodic table, the atomic structure, Mendel's laws of genetics, and the central dogma. And so this definition helps us to understand why scientific paradigms are really important for research. They outline what is to be observed and scrutinised. It enables us to see what kind of questions are to be asked and probed for answers in relation to the subject. It also helps to understand how these questions are to be structured and what predictions can be made by the primary theory. It also shows how the results should be interpreted and how an experiment should be conducted. So the bottom line is that, at least in my opinion, a paradigm helps you to understand a complex topic, and having an effective paradigm enables progress to be made in a field. So effectively, scientists trust the paradigm and solve scientific puzzles within the rules of the paradigm. More from that, it helps with science communication. <laughs> Since everyone is on the same page using shared vocabulary and helps scientists collaborate and work together. It helps to unify disciplines and enables you to build upon each other's results. So do we have a paradigm then for biogerontology, the study of the biology of aging? So in this case, a paradigm for aging would be a paradigm that could be used to understand the biological mechanisms of aging and how they give rise to late life diseases. So let's take a look at the hallmarks of aging then. And so as I said earlier, in this review paper, they describe aging by nine key hallmarks. And so you can see all of these nine key hallmarks here. And so if some of them don't make any sense to you, as I said earlier, I have made a previous video where I do briefly introduce each of the hallmarks. So just to read them out here, we've got genomic instability, telomere attrition, so shortening of telomeres, epigenetic alterations, so referring to how chromatin is packaged in the nucleus of a cell. Then there is loss of proteostasis, so referring to protein unfolding and protein aggregation deregulated nutrient sensing, which refers to mTOR and insulin signaling, mitochondrial dysfunction, so mitochondria being uh, the powerhouse of the cell, cellular senescence, which um, if you've watched any of my recent videos, you should know all about, stem cell exhaustion and altered intercellular communication. And so it's worth mentioning here that these hallmarks of aging were built upon some of the previous hypotheses to explain the aging process that are summarised in this figure here, where you can see that over time there was accumulating evidence to support the function of replicative senescence, damage through reactive oxygen species, evolutionary theories, and through fasting. And the authors of this critique paper describe these early hypotheses as experiencing a paradigmatic crisis, which refers to the crisis stage in Thomas Kuhn's paradigm theory. And so this crisis stage refers to the stage whereby accumulating evidence no longer fits with the current paradigm such that a new paradigm needed to be built upon or modified. But it's also worth noticing that around the early 2000s, 
Aubrey de Grey also published his theory for aging, which was based on seven, I guess you can call them hallmarks, but seven different damages that were causing the aging process. And so this is described in a lot of detail in Aubrey's book, which I am still currently reading and making my way through slowly. But as you can see, there's quite a bit of overlap between his ideas and the hallmarks of aging. As you can see, it includes the ideas of mitochondrial mutations, the accumulation of junk, which coincides with the loss of proteostasis, the genomic instability, which relates to nuclear mutations. And then the stuff referring to outside cells relates to the loss of intercellular communication. Anyway, if we come back to this critique article, what they are trying to assess is can we consider the hallmarks of aging as a paradigm for the field of biogerontology? And so as we learned earlier on about the definition of paradigms, it's something that can be used as communication in a field. So for example, if I was going to tell you about my research, P53, I could kind of legitimise my contribution to ageing by going P53 is involved in cellular senescence and this is one of the hallmarks of ageing. So it helps to put the audience at ease and give them some kind of familiarity. And this is because everyone in the field knows what you're talking about. And so you can see how it snowballs in size as more people join the field, legitimise their work and so on. But the interesting thing is that I'm actually a cancer researcher, which is convenient to mention at this point, because the hallmarks of ageing appear to mimic the hallmarks of cancer, which was published before the hallmarks of ageing by Hannah Hannah and Weinberg in 2000, before getting updated in 2011. And I know that this maybe sounds a bit like a sidestep, but it's brought up in this critique article because the hallmarks of cancer seems to serve as a much better paradigm for cancer than the hallmarks of ageing does for ageing. So what are their reasons to explain this? Well, I'm going to more or less quote from their critique article, but in the hallmarks of cancer, the primary cause of cancer is mutations of tumour suppressor genes that actually include my favourite protein, P53, but other proto-oncogenes. And it's these mutations that give rise to six other secondary causes, and it's those six other secondary causes that are considered in the hallmarks diagram. And so it doesn't actually include mutations as being a hallmark, because it's kind of assumed as a given. And so the formalisation of the hallmarks is such that you have a primary mechanism that then can cause a variety of different secondary mechanisms, and it's the secondary mechanisms that are the hallmarks, and this gives rise to disease. And so what the hallmarks of cancer achieves is a way to explain how a wide variety of different mutations, because different cancers can arise from different genetic mutations, but can give rise to a variety of cancers by acting through a subset of these secondary mechanisms. And so the authors of this critique paper argue that Hannah Hahn and Weinberg's account uses hallmarks that have considerable explanatory power, whereby a small number of features whose combined action can make sense of a great diversity in both upstream primary mechanisms, so in this case mutations affecting many genes, and downstream disease so different cancer types. And so unlike the hallmarks of cancer, the hallmarks of ageing include primary, secondary and tertiary mechanisms. So the secondary ones would be the antagonistic hallmarks and the tertiary mechanisms are the integrative hallmarks. And so their primary causes effectively mirror the multiple causes of somatic mutations seen in the hallmarks of cancer. And actually, this is one of the first points that they make, whereby cellular damage is assumed to be the main causal common denominator of ageing, but this is not certain. And more on from that, they argue that there's unproven claims about how the secondary causes are arising from the primary causes, as that is what their structure implies. And more on from that, it seems unclear what are the causes of the primary causes, as in what causes the loss of proteostasis or the epigenetic changes, Are they stochastic or programmatic? And they question why deregulated nutrient sensing isn't also considered a primary cause. As you can get deregulation of nutrient sensing, that doesn't necessarily result from damage. And then lastly, they argue it seems unclear how secondary and tertiary causes give rise to ageing, and that this list of tertiary and secondary causes also seems a bit arbitrary in that there are other factors that could easily have been mentioned, such as some of the ones on Aubrey de Grey's list, or other causes such as inflammation, immune senescence leading to increased infection, dysbiosis of the microbiome, and I would argue that disruption of circadian rhythms should also be added. So to summarise their criticism, they say that the hallmarks of ageing is problematic for several reasons. 
Firstly, the hallmarks of aging incorrectly gives an impression of an understanding of aging that does not yet exist. And that a true paradigm provides a framework of understanding that guides research into understanding the subject that it addresses. And in terms of understanding the causes of aging, the hallmarks of aging scheme has relatively little to offer except as a review of different aspects of the aging field, and as such, it is excellent. And this is because it is not a paradigm in the proper sense. Instead, they would consider the hallmarks of aging a pseudo paradigm. So, what would be their solution? Well, they argue for a more multifactorial view of aging in terms of the distinct types of primary mechanisms and to account for multiple types of primary mechanisms as opposed to using the cancer hallmarks where you've got one main primary mechanism. You would need a multi-cause template rather than a single cause one. And you can see their templates here in this figure. And so in this type of template, there are multiple classes of primary cause, which combine in different ways and contribute to differing extents to generate specific diseases of aging. And so if you didn't completely follow that, part of the reason is that at the moment, aging is still kind of poorly understood and still differs in the way that it's defined. And so what are my opinions on all this? Well, I think it's good to challenge a paradigm as it makes you think about something in a different way. And I like to think that a good scientist is always open to new ideas if there is supporting evidence. And so I think it's always been known that the hallmarks of ageing is not perfect. But so far, they've held up pretty well, even though they were published around eight years ago. But as I've learned more about the field myself, and learned of different explanatory mechanisms to explain ageing, such as the informational theory of ageing that Davis and Claire talks about, which to explain briefly is the idea that ageing is loss of information, and that if we can identify the factors that are responsible for the loss of information or the ones that record the data that's lost, it would help us to better identify ways of treating aging. And I kind of lost track of where the sentence was heading, but the main thing I wanted to say was, as I emphasised so much in the beginning, having a paradigm is so important for a field, as to a large extent it dictates what's researched and how that research data is interpreted, and it can also inspire new ideas and also very useful for science communication and understanding a concept that is notoriously quite hard to understand. And so I'm certain that having a good paradigm for ageing would really help to boost the fields even further, um, even though it seems to be doing quite well at the moment anyway. But I guess the question is, what do you think? Have the hallmarks helped you to understand the field better? Or would you have alternative ideas? And um, maybe we can create Shiki's theory of aging. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, although technically, maybe I have created one through all of my videos somehow. And I haven't noticed it. Who knows? Anyway, I hope you have found this video entertaining and that you were able to follow the arguments. Remember to check out Life Extend Show's video as well, as they probably have done a better job at explaining it than I have. Um, so thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.